Welcome to YouTube channel James X. I am your host, James X. And everybody is shocked because the lady from The Biggest Loser doesn't understand science. As reported by USA Today, Gillian Michaels, no relation to Sean, slammed the ketogenic diet. She said, I don't understand, like, why would anybody think this is a good idea? And so I'm not going to bash on Gillian Michaels. She makes some good points such as how balanced diets can be beneficial and exercise is important. And she has trained and motivated many people to lose large amounts of fat, which essentially has saved their lives in many cases. Now, in terms of the biggest loser and this extreme weight loss in a fast period of time, that is a, a subject for another video. But for sure, being morbidly obese is not healthy. She says, just work out, eat clean and don't overeat. That is a great statement to make. The issue is the part at the beginning and the end of the statement, which for me are very problematic and not something I would expect of a balanced, open-minded fitness professional. And she says, don't go keto, I promise you a balanced diet. Your cells are literally made up of protein, fat, carbohydrates and nucleic acid. And she projects the idea that if you don't get one of these macronutrients that your cells will starve. And so before I explain why that science is incorrect, I first want to apologize to the ketogenic diet experts. Not you, Thomas. Thomas. Such as Dr. Dom D'Agostino, a ketogenic diet researcher and participant and lifter who looks at ketogenic dieting in relation to military personnel and also a range of diseases that it is these celebrities who are the ones who are spreading this debate and discourse. And the sad thing is that millions and millions of people will get their information about specific diets from said celebrities. And so I'm going to list off some names of celebrities who are involved in the ketogenic diet. And for sure, I do know who all of these people are. Courtney Kardashian, Kim Kardashian, LeBron James, taught him everything he knows. Andy Cohen, Al Roker, Vinny from Jersey Shore, and Halle Berry. Make me feel good. No jokes there, good actress. And so giving absolutes when it comes to diets, giving concrete guidelines is extremely problematic. Because after all, we all have our own unique characteristics when it comes to choosing our eating protocol. There are so many variables involved. We cannot, in our right mind, give a specific, concrete answer to everybody. And I don't really like the word diet either, but it saves me saying the words eating protocol about 20 times in this video, which would be more painful than me pronunciating the word adherence, adherence, adherence. Nailed it. So in this video, I'm going to explain why the science that she projects in context of what she's saying is incorrect. Hence why this is in the Mythbusters series. Now, I am not anti-keto. I am not pro-keto. I believe that you all have the right to choose your own eating protocol. However, that tribalism and this idea that my diet is better than yours and I know something you don't know and you are naive and ignorant because you don't follow my eating protocol is completely redundant and not needed and not constructive in any way. And so I do eat carbohydrates. I do eat more of a balanced diet currently. However, again, the idea that you have to follow one eating protocol for the rest of your life, you know, as, as indefinitely forever, again, is kind of silly in my opinion. And so you are free to eat however you like. However, please understand the effect of your eating protocol on the various mechanisms of your body. And also understand that regardless of your eating protocol, the same scientific parameters apply for fat loss or muscle building, such as an energy balance, such as caloric deficit or caloric surplus of protein intake, etc. Indeed, Dr. Dom D'Agostino very clearly projects the idea that if you are ketogenic dieting, and he is a keto dieter and proponent, that caloric deficit does matter for fat loss. We both agree that in terms of weight loss and body composition, that your total calorie intake per day is the most important thing, correct? Yes, yeah. and I believe the ketogenic strategy is a way to regulate that. And, and I am ready for people being unnecessarily triggered by this video because I am covering an aspect of an eating protocol. And so I'm ready for the emotional, out of context, overreactive responses from people attacking me even though I'm not anti-keto, not pro-keto, I have no agenda and I'm just giving you real scientific facts. But I am prepared for those comments. And as a wise man once said, 
I have been 5% body fat. And Hemingway has nothing to do with this video, but I wanted to try and fit him in somewhere as a congratulations for him almost reaching 5,000 YouTube video uploads, of which 4,900 are about Jerry Ward. Now, ketogenic dieting can actually be low carb as well, high fat, very low or no carb diet, and your body is using fat as an alternative source of energy. Now, your body does need glucose as a key nutrient for many mechanisms such as your brain functioning and you may say well maybe some of these celebrities aren't getting the glucose in their brain good point and so then you may think that Julian Michaels is correct well if you're not taking in carbohydrates then how are you producing glucose for important mechanisms in your body such as your brain function such as your nervous system well the answer is that your body can produce glucose through various forms and this is called gluconeogenesis. And one example is that your body can convert the glycerol backbone. I've made videos about lipolysis and fatty acids, triacylglycerides, so you can go and watch that. But your body can convert this in the liver to glucose. And this is called gluconeogenesis. Now, in, in this context, it would require a decent amount of fat intake through your diet. But ketogenic dieters are intaking fat. And so, in essence, People who are keto dieting and eating large amounts of fat and, and low to no carbohydrate can produce glucose through gluconeogenesis for these vital mechanisms of your body. Therefore, she's incorrect in saying that you are starving your body and that your body does not and that your cells will not work without this macronutrient as your body can produce glucose. And so how would you starve your cells of nutrients? Well, if you are starving, if you are not intaking adequate food and drink over a sustained period of time and you were literally starving, then you would be starving your body of macronutrients. And so in the context of what Gillian Michaels was saying about the ketogenic diet, she is, she is completely incorrect, scientifically and factually incorrect. Now there is debate to be had about specific eating protocols for the ketogenic diet. It can be fiber intake, the role of vegetables, nutrition, health markers, but that's not what I'm gonna do. I just wanted to focus on what she was saying. And as always, I welcome comments below. And I want to particularly thank people for the comments under the Alan Roberts video where I asked people to explain what resistance training means in their lives. And the comments section was truly incredible and deeply meaningful. And reading those comments was very powerful and, and had a deep impact on me. And so I want to thank you for your input. I also want to thank the minority of people who will be deeply upset that, that I talked about anything related to the ketogenic diet. I'm James Linker, Shredder Sports Science. I'll see you soon.